text JJR, whatever you want to say, to 96893. Or you can go old school and just call us at 877-937-1047. I can't believe it's October. I know. That was wild. Fast. Jeez, man. It doesn't feel like October. Anyway, um, I did this new workout on Friday. And I've been meaning to talk to you guys about it because here we are, October 1, and I'm so sore. And it is this thing where I know Rich did a similar version to this, but from what I understand, from my I, my yoga teacher started doing this stuff, is you put on a suit and you got to put on a long sleeve t-shirt and then they get your t-shirt soaking wet and they put the suit on you over the t-shirt and then you do 20 minutes of exercise and the suit electrocutes you. And people I work with or work out with, uh, my trainers and stuff, they're like, that stuff doesn't work, that, you know, whatever, it's just a scam. You know, like there's some gyms that are opening up where everyone puts these suits on mm-hmm. and exercise. Yeah. And I said, this is a little different than that. And he goes, how so? He goes, because this woman spent $6,000 on a battery for the suit. Oh Each suit God. gets its own battery, $6,000. I'm like, that seems like an expensive class to take, right? Yeah, for sure. Right. So she wanted me to try it out. So I tried it out. And it's been four days. And I'm so sore. My butt cheeks, my chest, and it was not, oh my abs like and, terrible. And doesn't it feel like when you're doing the workout, you're like, okay, well that's not as hard as I thought. We're done. But no, it, it hurt. Oh, okay, <laughs> like I had I had to turn. She was, I was like, my abs, stop, turn it down, turn it down. My abs were like, <laughs> yeah, they oh can God. definitely turn it up high. Yeah, it, it, no, and she was at a at a low thing, and then she I had to turn it up on my legs and turn whatever. So anyway, it was this really bizarre thing and i don't know what the science is behind it but i know not to put down the classes the other classes but i know it's different than that because maybe those are like you know they can buy a bunch of those for maybe the batteries aren't that powerful or something i don't, I don't remember know. the soaking wet shirt part when i tried on this suit. Anyway, i know it was tight it and was I, different and i know that it it, it like it uh it, it pulses your muscles while you're doing it was stuff. insane it was an insane experience and i'm still so sore but i know peyton you said you were going to go to that hot works thing which is yoga in a sauna Right? Yeah, and they have like you can do like a bike riding class, or you can do like I think like a weightlifting class. I don't know exactly what it is, but you're inside. They're like high interval training sessions, and you go, and they're like 15 minute sessions. You can hit as many as you want. You can hit the free weights, and then you can go. I told you guys last week that I was set up to go. What was yesterday? You guys, I had to cancel my appointment for like the most unrealistic, but also so realistic reason. I just got my hair done a couple days ago, and I'm not ready to sweat at, sweat it out yet. <laughs> so I had to do like the shame call, being like, "Hey, um, can I reschedule for like next week or something?" My hair it's looks actually fabulous. very relatable. <laughs> it is very oh. relatable. I'm like, I just took a shower. Do I really want to work out today? <laughs> I'm like, and it's like I sat in the chair for a couple of hours, so I'm like, I'm just not ready to let it go yet. So I had to reschedule my workout. Did you actually say to them that? you get your hair done oh god no oh because i would think like, like like everything you're saying right now i've experienced through my wife yeah when she gets her hair done so don't you think if you call a place and a woman answers and, she, and you say hey i gotta cancel i got my hair done that'd be like, oh totally don't yeah you think? probably yeah. like kyle totally knew what you're talking about my wife when she gets her hair done like we have this routine on the weekends where we were like you know we get in the hot tub and we cold plunge you know and then on during the week also we sauna but when my wife gets her hair done no way, Jose. That doesn't right. Or yep. if she does, she puts on this like yellow bonnet over her hair. Have you seen one of those? No. It lo- she looks like the woman that's on churning butter. It's like a shower cap kind of thing but to it's keep different. it dry. It's like a, it, it's a weird look. Uh, I'm sure she says she's had it since she was in high school. So I don't know. Oh, the, they probably have a new it, version of it it's now. A, it's a, it looks like a hat. And it just looks like she's on a farm, but it's yellow <laughs> and she's churning butter. But she does not get her hair jacked up. Exactly. And so I have to believe that it's really... So what would you say to get out of it? I just said that... I just said I needed to reschedule. I didn't really give a reason or an explanation. I didn't feel like I had to. See, for for me, being a guy, I get a haircut. I need to go sweat it out because I don't want the hair all over my shirt. My, right. That's my a good point, too. <laughs> hair follicles. <laughs> but you made uh, the right call, Peyton, because yeah, yeah. your hair looks fabulous. Thanks, yeah. yeah. So I'm did they reserve a room for you? Is that why you had to cancel? Like, you have to reserve, but you can't just show up? No, well, well it was going to be my first time going back, so I had to go through, like, the whole orientation kind of thing, see where everything's at, that kind of vibe. Pass. <laughs> I got to post a video. I'll post a video so you can see my uh, the thing I did, because especially the part where my abs were, I was like, she, so the, the yoga teacher I had, she set her camera up to film our whole workout, right? And there was a point where I'm like, oh, ah, ah, 
<laughs> Please turn it down. Turn she it down. She cranked up high. Uh, I don't think she did. It just hurts like I that? I just have weak abs. <laughs> so was it like you had a bunch of like um, stem circles around you? Yeah, that but times a thousand. Oh, wow. It was insane. It was a 20-minute workout. And like my upper butt cheeks are so sore. <laughs> and I was talking to my the guy I normally train with. He's like, yeah, probably because when you're doing these certain exercises for that, you're using other muscles instead of the right muscles, and that electricity is activating the right muscles. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, man. I was, guess that makes sense. It was a trip. Kyle, what's coming up three things you need to know? Well, I don't know about you guys, but every time I scroll through Instagram, I see the devastating effects of Hurricane Helene, just the flooding and just towns and cities that have been obliterated. The death toll from Hurricane Helene is at about 132 people. They expect that to continue to rise. Um, that's across six different states that were affected. There is flooding everywhere. The thing that I thought was kind of wild is officials are warning people like if they're trapped and need help just to wait to be rescued and not to tread the floodwaters on their own because the floodwaters could cause sickness, injury, or even death. Oh yeah, there's so much stuff that debris and all kinds of things that you could rebar that you could cut yourself on and it's over. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully we can get uh, like, you know, help out there immediately. And we get the government to step in and <laughs> send the troops. Experts suggest that eating your evening meal, your dinner, within a specific two-hour window can actually increase your weight loss, improve your sleep, and aid your digestion. They're calling it the early bird approach. Timing your last meal a day between 5 and 7 p.m. actually allows you to align with your body's natural circadian rhythm. Eating too late disturbs this and can cause all kinds of problems with your sleep, digestion, your mood, all, all, all these things. So don't eat late. They said people who actually ate their main meal around 5 p.m. burned way more calories than those who ate their dinner later on in the day. So I saw this article last night and I talked to my wife about it. We had dinner at 5.30. And then, like, at 6.30, 6.35, I was like, it's almost 7. I better go eat. <laughs> so I wanted to eat. Like, I, I looked at it like I got I get to eat between 5 and 7. So I ate. Like, I was like, oh, oh I got 20 minutes left before 7 o'clock. Did it number two. I, some cat. I took a spoonful of peanut butter. I had some yogurt. <laughs> That's not really what it meant. <laughs> I feel like 5.30 is yeah. so early for dinner. Oh, my gosh. We eat at 5 o'clock every night. I'm like, totally we gotta, down. We got to get to bed early, people. <laughs> I'm like, I get hungry by 9. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, just so you know, it could be messing with your body weight. It could be messing with your mood. It could be messing with your sleep. Maybe you should test it out and see if it affects it. I'll let you know, Kyle. Okay. Uber just launched Uber Safari. So the service is going to be a day-long outing in a traditional safari truck. They're going to Cape Town, South Africa. It costs you about 200 bucks for up to four guests. And they actually take you to a wildlife conservancy for, for like the day. And you get to check out all of the cool animals and the lions and wow. the tigers and the bears. Oh, my. <laughs> like, I think this is a lot more affordable than your traditional safari. And apparently the people who are driving these traditional safari trucks actually know their stuff too so it's not just like random person in a like four door sedan it's an actual safari truck with an expert and that's three things you need to know listen to this text right you could text us JJR and whatever you want to say to 96893 we need Peyton to come to the front of the congregation for previously saying negative things about Nick Cannon and Kevin Gates <laughs> she seemed to have a different energy when speaking about them on the show what's your deal Pepe hashtag we need answers K bye love the show I don't You're right. That. Every time we ever talk about Nick Kenny, you always go, "Ew!" Or you do something like well, that, well, and then Nick Kenny like here. eight baby moms. And but when he was here, like, "Oh, whoa, yeah, what's up? I'll get it right. I'll get it yeah, right." Yeah, but that doesn't change the fact you got like eight baby moms. Uh, okay, I'm just saying this. <laughs> oh, now she's back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. She, hey, Peyton has always said she's a walking contradiction. That's true. That's true. She's always said that. And what's <laughs> consistent? It's your contradiction. What's the vibe for predictions, Peyton? Well, I'm going to give you your October vibe check for each zodiac sign. Eight seven seven nine three seven one zero four seven. Call us right now to get your sign read. Teresa, good morning. What's your sign? Hi, good morning. I'm a Sagittarius. For my Sagittarius, this October, you are on full-on adventurer mode. Ghost tours, haunted houses, spooky road trips, whatever brings the thrill. My Sagittarius, you guys are chasing it. Just don't ghost all of your responsibilities and make sure to balance the fun with a touch of reality. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That's a Sagittarius. All right, Teresa, have a great day. All right. Thanks, guys. Hi, Mary. Or Marcy. Marcy, what's your sign? Marcy? Um, you, did you say Arcy? Oh, it's Arcy. I have Marcy written down on the... Okay, Arcy. Oh. 
my sinus cancer. Well, cancer, October wants you to get a little witchy. So trust your gut more than your heart. There's a lot of magic in the air and your intuition is going to be on point. So the spooky side that you might surface, it's all a part of your fall glow up. Oh, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thanks, RC. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Suri. Yes, good morning. Good morning. What's your How's sign? How's it going? I am a Capricorn. Well, Capricorns, October is asking you to take a break from building your empire. So it's time to it's time to find some witchy work life balance. So light some fall candles br- or binge watch some scary movies, and remember, it's okay to just be where your feet are sometimes. Okay, I can dig that. I definitely need that after the last uh, two months of work. Yes, exactly. Get that balance. All Perfect. Right, so Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. You too. Thank you. Bye. Diane, good morning. What's your sign? Good morning. I'm a Scorpio. Well, Scorpio season is approaching, so naturally you're feeling like the mysterious queen that you are. October wants you to embrace your dark side and tap into your deep intensity, so you're going to be magnetizing all of the good things in these next couple of weeks. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really good one. I think you got the best of all the signs today. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Rosie, what's your sign? Good morning. This is Rosie the Aquarius. Well, Rosie the Aquarius, this month you are vibing with the weird and the quirky and the unexplained. You are drawn to all of the things mystical from tarot cards to moon rituals. So don't be afraid to let your your flag fly. Your originality is going to be your superpower over the October month. Awesome. You guys have a great morning. You You too. too. Thanks for listening. Do we do Libra? No, we haven't Let's gotten do into Kyle Libra. The Libra. Yeah, Kyle, we are in Libra season. October wants you to flirt with spooky season Libras. You're vibing with all of the autumn aesthetics, and honestly, everyone's going to be drawn to your energy like a moth to a flame. So just be careful not to burn out from juggling all of your social invites during your birthday month. Okay. Let's have some fun, people. Yes. <laughs> How about Pisces? Yeah, rich Pisces. October has you feeling super dreamy. It's going to be like you're living in your own Halloween fantasy world. So don't get lost in the fog. There is a really thin line between spooky fun and ghosting your real life responsibilities. So balance the magic with a little bit of a reality check as well, okay? Sounds good. I'm All in. Right. How about for you, the Leo? Yeah, Leos. As the leaves fall, Leo, so does our guard. So it's time to let someone in, even if it's a little scary to us. This October, we're the star of our own rom-com and there's definitely a plot twist with that so go get your boo yes a play on words so let your let yourself shine even in spooky season how about virgo yeah john j virgo this month is all about spooky self-care for you clean up the skeletons in all of your closet literally and metaphorically so get your space organized declutter your mind and you're going to be vibing with all of the cozy fall energy speaking of skeletons i saw this somebody i don't know where i saw it yesterday last night before i went to bed but someone said when you're brushing your teeth, it's the only time you're touching your skeleton. Oh, that's interesting. Pretty that's badass. Funny. Oh, that's <laughs> trippy, yeah. Right? You're like cleaning your skeleton when you brush your teeth. Like, dang. Oh, that's weird. Your teeth are bones, no? Or are they just teeth? I think they're different than bones. Are but they? they're still, when you see a skeleton, they got their yeah, teeth. Yeah, they're with you. It's true. Um, um, we got a text. Well, first of all, if we missed your sign, go to johnjrich.com. They're all posted. The text is from a 602 number, and it says, you guys have to watch Nobody Wants This on Netflix. Such a great comedy. And hopefully they'll hear our podcast if they missed it, because that was pretty much our show yesterday. Today is National Taco Day. 90% of adults like to eat tacos. 83% they love Mexican food, and they eat it once a month. I agree. A new poll asked Americans what they wish they had more time for on Sundays. What do you think is the number one answer? Sleep. Sleep. TikTok added a side-scrolling game called Scream Chicken. Have you guys seen it yet? No. Mm-hmm. I just asked Jenna to go find it so we could do it. It's where you control the character by squawking at your phone. It's fun to play, but it's more fun to watch other people play. <laughs> so this is other people playing the game. Okay, just talk slow. Bark, bark, bark. Bark, bark. Oh, bark. <gasps> but he fell in the water. <laughs> bark, 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 bark. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess you say the noise to keep the chicken moving, and then uh-huh. and then it's like going to fall somewhere. I haven't seen it yet, but I hope <laughs> that, that sounds amazing. I hope that we all like do it. Flappy bird, but you use your voice instead right. of your finger. <laughs> there is a new sandwich that's trending. It's a three ingredient sandwich. I think it's going to be a hard sell, but actually, I think I would eat it. It's cream cheese, okay, 
Green olives and bread. Would anyone eat that? No. No. I, I would try it. I like olives. My wife can't stand olives. I don't like olives. I don't like green olives. I saw this olive and cream cheese sandwich recipe on the Bon Appetit website earlier this week. But this sandwich, three ingredients. Simple white bread from the grocery store. Green olives roughly chopped into pebble-sized pieces. And a generous swipe of cream cheese on each side. It's hardly a new idea. The author of this recipe says... Cream cheese is fantastic. I think mm-hmm. you put cream cheese on I think it's great. That's true. Um, EV drivers, electric drivers, and I just saw this on the news before we started uh, Stacks and Hacks. They've been warned of potential fire hazards because Hurricane Helene has caused some electric cars to explode. You see the video? No. Oh, there's a video of a Tesla in someone's garage, and you see the water coming in from the flood, and it literally, like, shorts... It was, like, charging, I guess, and it shorts the spark, and it, like, literally blows up in, like, a minute. Like, oh, wow. It happens real fast. And they say it takes a long time for those electric car fires to get put out because of all the all the battery stuff. Like, days. They can burn for a long time. Wow. A dad from South Carolina named David Jones walked 30 miles to get to his daughter's wedding in Tennessee over the weekend. It was supposed to be a two-hour drive, but roads were blocked because of the hurricane and the flooding. And he'd run marathons before, so he's like, I'm going to make it there. And he just kept walking. He He loves his daughter. That's awesome. And he said he didn't tell her he walked until after the wedding because he didn't want her to freak out. Six-year-old boy in Rhode Island named Luca started a poop scooping business to make money to buy himself a kitten. His mom works at Animal Shelter, and he likes to tag along. This is him. It's fun. I love cleaning. It's like one of my favorite things. People hate picking up dog poop. I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. $15 for one dog or 24 multiple dogs. Luca just has a knack uh, for reading animals. Volunteering is, is one of our core values in life. He is the first person to walk into the building. He'll immediately start folding laundry. He'll sweep and mop the floors. Um, you know, he'll tell everybody, I love my job. I love coming to work every day. Cute. What a cute kid. Oh. Are we ready for a roller skating competition? Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> it's Roller Jam. It's Hit Max October 10th. It's hosted by our friend Jordan Sparks from American Idol. It's produced by Chip and Joanna Gaines. Love them. And it's a roller skating competition, which I think Grant, who's a avid roller skater, should somehow yes. get in there. Rich, what do you got for Life Hacks? Okay, so uh, let me ask you this. John Shay, what movie have you seen? Maybe maybe your favorite movie that you've watched more than any other movie ever. Indiana Jones, Red of Lost Ark. Okay, good. Cal, Star do you Wars. have one? Maybe Anchorman. Anchorman. Okay, Peyton? The Great Gatsby. Okay, so here you Great Gatsby. Interesting yeah. choice. Okay, so this is the best hack when you're feeling anxiety. The best thing that you can do is watch your favorite movie that you've seen over and over and over again. Because what is anxiety? It is fear of the future. But a plot that you know, that makes you feel safe in an unsure world. So they say that the best thing that make you feel better when you're feeling a little anxious, when you're feeling a little uh, little off, is watching the movie that you've seen over and over and over again. So check that out. Try that and get back to us if you're feeling a little edgy today. That life hack can be found at johnjanerich.com. Number one show, TV show on Netflix right now is uh, Nobody Wants This, which we talked about already. We went around the room. Um, Peyton saw it all over the weekend. I saw it all over the weekend. Kyle, did you finish it? I did. I finished it this morning. Did you like it? So cute. Isn't it cute? So cute. (laughs) Isn't it funny? It's hilarious. How many episodes? Ten. Oh, okay. I'm about. I think I'm five in now. So there's um, I already explained yesterday how many times they I felt they took from our show, and I and I don't I I want to be angry and say they stole from us, but I feel like they were like paying us an homage or they because I really like the show. I was talking about how one of the girls on the show had a fling with Adam Levine one night, (laughs) as did Kyle. Then the next scene is a guy named Kyle talking about living in Phoenix. So I felt like that was too close. Then the dog rescue. Something else happened. Oh, yeah. Something else happened. Um, and it reminds me of something that happened on this show. When Rich used the word ricotta. Yeah. But like, you, they can. You're supposed to put ricotta cheese. Yeah. They, they, they <laughs> that was the biggest ick. Ricotta. Never gets old. That's so good. So then... Gotta lean in. Then the scene, there's a scene where the guy on the show meets her parents for the first time and someone brings out this big empty jar of tomato sauce to put flowers in. Found an old Prego jar. Ah, oh, Prego. <laughs> and I was just like, 
Uh, I'm on the vibe with him stealing it. <laughs> I mean, are you guys with I mean, me there on that? How do you know? Yeah. How do you know? You was that, was that, prego, <laughs> that prego thing was funny, wasn't yeah. it? When that happened? <laughs> and those sisters are just brilliant. The oh, acting yeah. is brilliant. So then yesterday, we were doing something yesterday. You know, we were, we were getting ready for something. We were returning text messages and all this stuff. And the mics were just rolling on the show, right? And so when there's down, Rich can't handle silence, right? That's true. So he just, he, he just starts talking. So we're waiting, but Noah got it all. Because this was another one of those Prego things. It was about this sparkling water, right? The brand, right? <laughs> so I, this, this is what... Now, what you're going to hear is the four of us off mic a little bit. But Rich talks on the mic. Found an old Prego jar. Ah, Prego! Just out of curiosity, did anybody else get a bunch of cases of La Croix at their house for no reason? Just what's yeah. what's nope. La Croix? That seltzer water? I was LaCroix? Yeah. It's called La Croix? Yeah, I think that's what they say. <laughs> you're so, you're so prego, prego. Uh, you remember uh, what he said? Yeah. <laughs> Ricotta. Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny, that scene, too, wasn't that's it? Yeah. That was just... like the disgust on her face, though. <laughs> if y'all want some, I'll bring in some, because I got, like, all these cases. I like La Croix. I don't know where it came from. I like La Croix, oh. but I don't know about it. La Croix. <laughs> La Croix. Do any of you guys drink La Croix? La Croix. La Croix. La Croix. <laughs> Come on, it's fun to say. Why does everybody crap on things that are fun to say? Why You're just like those news anchors that would be like, yesterday in Nicaragua. <laughs> you know, first of all, I'm always fighting my Midwest accent where, you know, things are like, and I did it 40 times. You're like, I'm always fighting the nasal. But when there's something that you could lean into, why not? It's fun. Why? Yeah, but you didn't say it like you were. You were trying to be fun. Yeah, That's... You really meant to say it like this. Yeah. It's, 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 it's what it's called. That's right? hilarious. Like, why do you do that? Because that's what it's called. How do I defend this? <laughs> and I am trying to have fun. It's fun to say <laughs> you, you didn't say, say it like that. that. You Did were you not a, hear the same clip? You I were heard. having a normal yeah, conversation yeah, with us. Did anybody get any La Croix? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? I actually don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know what to do with you people. It could be. I mean, it's L E. It's C R O I X, right? Yeah. So I'd be like La Croix. La Croix. La Croix. La Croix. Oh, Grant. Grant knows. He's from France. Isn't it? Isn't it La Croix? That's what I thought. I think I yeah. said that in the clip. La Croix. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're, I mean, if you're French like Ridge, it's yeah. <laughs> it's like whoa. Have you had a La Croix? There's a street you, where you I go to that restaurant, Le, Le Amé. Could I have a La Croix? This must be trauma for me because there's a street where I grew up called Gravois. G R A V O I S. Mm. And I always say, "Oh, if it's off Gravois," and my mom would look at me and he's like, "It's Gravois." <laughs> it probably well, is coming from your past. I, I so maybe that's. I'm feeling like a total like trauma, trauma childhood thing. Yeah, right now. Str- really bad, <laughs> street names you can't put street names in because like I mean look at Jermaine. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. German, but yeah. Yeah, everyone says Jermaine. So Jermaine. there's something. In Gravois, you have to throw that out. But I think water water brands, Coca Cola, Pepsi, La Croix. <laughs> See, isn't that enjoyable? Ricotta cheese. Why would you? Prego, not, prego. Why would you not lean in? <laughs> anyway, so that's uh, the TV show. Nobody wants this. By the way, I happened to watch Wolves yesterday. Oh yeah, you guys caught that yet? Yeah, I watched uh, it. Wolves. Brad Pitt and George Clooney movie. Is it a movie? Yes. On yeah. Netflix. No, Apple. on Apple. Oh, on Apple, and it's they play. There was a movie, Pulp Fiction, a movie called Pulp Fiction, and there's a huge, uh, a head gets blown off, and they call a guy called a cleaner. They call him the wolf. You're calling the wolf? And the wolf comes and cleans up the mess, so you, no one gets it. It's kind of like Ray Donovan. Ray Donovan yeah. is a wolf, I guess. And so it's two wolves, Brad Pitt and George Clooney, and they get called to this bloody scene by two different people, I guess, and they end up having to work together. And I thought it was terrible. Really? Because yes. I would think seeing them back like on the screen together would be. Kind it was of awesome. The you first ten think. minutes, you're like, "This is, you know, they're really cool. They're good looking. They're talking really cool to each other. And there's this cool vibe." But it doesn't. It never goes anywhere. It stays the same. They never like. Oh my god, where are you from? Are you serious? Like they're just like, you know what? I know. Let's go to, to the store. We're go-. like, you know, like, it's like there's. Yeah. It's just like, I just thought it was stale. And then mm-hmm. it ends like you would expect it to end. So it ends, actually, it, they very much copy a movie called the Butch Cassidy and That's Sundance That's what I was Kid. thinking of, too. But they're already working on a sequel. So well, I'm guessing it doesn't end how you think it ends. doesn't also end like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the TV show, just ended the same right. way? But Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I don't know, has been renewed yet. Oh, okay. But this has already been renewed. When they signed the deal, there's going to be a Wolves 2, which is weird. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the way it ends is like, there is no Wolves 2. It did start off where you're like, <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I just thought there were so many plot lines, so many holes in it, and I was just like, oh. So anyway, I, I kind of recommend it because you want to see them. Yeah. It's cool. Right. It's cool but to it's see them dud. together. It's a dud, I think, mm. in my so opinion. just watch the first 10, 15 minutes <laughs> and then bounce? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A couple text messages. 480 number. John T. and Rich, I live in Cottonwood. My daughter got lice three times in a row because the new policy at school is to not send kids home any longer. Nurse even told my daughter not to tell her teacher. Jeez, oh, that's terrible. John Jane Rich. And about the water lacroix. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, I'm sitting at work, my earbuds in, and I'm just getting my day started, and you all made me pee my pants from laughing <laughs> so hard, and I'm trying to be quiet so people don't think I'm crazy and i'm just hilariously laughing at my desk for no reason <laughs> uh good morning john and rich this is don on wolves i thought it was okay but i figured they ended it like it was gonna there was gonna be a new episode tr- show drop which may be good but not another movie so yeah i don't think it'd be another good movie there was a couple of cool scenes you know because it's brad pitt and george clooney you know what i mean right. there's a couple of cool things and there was another there was a kid on the show and he was the, the victim and he would tell us well how, how'd you get here and, they, and he goes, well, I woke up, and Brad Pitt's like, I don't want to hear how you woke up. I don't want to hear the whole day. Just get to it. Just get to the story. So, yeah, like, had moments. Like that. But not worthy of a two-hour movie. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, Jessica, good morning. Good morning. You're our contestant. We're going to play a game, and Nick is the host of the game. But first, you get to pick your prize. So you either Woo! get tickets to, what's the what's the scary place? Fear Farm. Fear Farm. Fear Farm. How many tickets? Four. Four tickets to Fear Farm, or how many tickets to Pitbull? Two. Dos. Two tickets to Pitbull, or four tickets to Fear Farm? What do you want to play for? Dale, I got to go with Mr. Worldwide. Dale. Yeah. All right, Nick, what game we playing? You guys, we're playing a spooky edition of Noise Machine today. It's October, right? Yeah. yeah. It's spooky season. Let's get let's get scary. These are things that keep you up at night. I'm going to play a noise, and here's the deal. You have to tell me what that noise is. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jessica, does that make sense to you? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. So, uh, in the spirit of uh, spirits, let's start with John Jay. I do wish we could chat longer, but... I'm having an old friend for dinner. Hannibal Lecter, played by Anthony Hopkins, Silence of the Lambs. Yes, all of those are correct. Wow. Thank you. My goodness. You know, just because you went above and beyond, Judge, three points. Wow. Yeah. Coming in hot. <laughs> Trish. For shizzling. <laughs> okay, next is Rich. I want to play a game. That's Jigsaw. Uh-huh. Good job. From okay. Saw. Yeah, I, well, you took a little too long. So, one point for Rich. <laughs> Oh, it's now three to one, wow. John Jay. I guess you gotta be quick, mm. Mm. guys. This is my game. I don't need your nonsense. I'm just learning the rules as we go. <laughs> Hayden, <laughs> that is from Jurassic Park, and that is the T Rex. Oh my gosh! You know what, Peyton? That's so close. Uh, we are actually looking for it's from Jurassic Park three. Okay, uh, and it's the Spinosaurus. Cool. So. <laughs> You were, I mean, How this could you cl- not notice the, the difference? The Spinosaurus right. killed the T-Rex. <laughs> my bad, in my bad. One. If I could take my shoe and throw it across the studio and hit you right in the head right now, I totally would. <laughs> How come I, you can't? Yeah, are, you are, paralyzed? Paralyzed? <laughs> are you paralyzed? <laughs> it's a nice shoes. I just, I just figured that would be a really like not kind thing to do, but that's how I feel inside, Nick. Okay, well, I mean, at least you were close. Zero points. Cool. None for Peyton. Kyle. If you don't feel me, that means you can't touch me. <laughs> Okay, is that Diddy? It it uh it is Diddy. Yeah, the it, things that keep you up at scary, night. Scary, scary. Oh God, that's good. And there's no audio from the white parties, guys. I'm I'm, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. You guys paid for that on the, for sure. on the dark web. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Jessica, it's your turn. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Is that Frankenstein? Fine. Let's go! Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Good job, Jessica. Woo. John Jay, Rich, Kyle, and Jessica all with points in this game. There's one particular person who is uh, a, rolling with goose eggs. Um, we're rolling. We're going around to Guys, let's get crazy. John Jay. While your right hand is doing this, your left hand can be doing this or this or, you know... 
But if your left hand sees how much fun your right hand is having, it won't want to be left out. Okay, first I was listening to the words to uh-huh. see what it was, but then I recognized the voice. Yeah. Bill Cosby? <laughs> we are looking for Bill Cosby. <laughs> wow. That's from... I mean, you're this not is, wrong. This is, this is real. That's from a Jell-O commercial. Wow. I do remember that. 15 actually. seconds of just talking about what your hands are doing. Anyway, John Jay, way to go. You nailed it. Uh, so we'll move on to Rich. Um, I just, I just try to be a role model. Mmm, <laughs> scary people. Mm. Was that O.J. Simpson? Oh, O.J. Simpson. That's a really good guess. It's wrong. Uh, it's a really good guess. We don't really be an idiot. Do Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez is oh, correct. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Nick going dark on this game, which, yeah. is, which is fine. Yeah. It's October. It's there are no rules scary. on the yeah. darkness. Things are right. scary. They Things are. that keep you up at night. I wouldn't want to run into Aaron Hernandez. Especially now that, he's, would. Yeah, now that he's not uh, like alive. Uh, Peyton. <laughs> that is your son, Theo, who you call Monster. Oh, okay. Jurassic Park 5. Okay, I call. Okay, so I call Theo Beast. Oh, Beast. Uh, we're Dang actually, it, I was close. Technically, it would be Jurassic Park 4, but it's Jurassic World. Uh, okay. The Indominus Rex is cool. what we are looking for. So, you, I mean, again, so, so close. close. So close. Right there. But wrong. <laughs> Kyle, do you okay. get the point of this game? <laughs> yeah. It's things that keep you up at night. It's this. It's just things that frighten you. Okay, okay Kyle's turn. They can. Um. You're supposed to put a ricotta cheese. Which <laughs> 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 is Italian accent. Yeah. <laughs> just things that keep me up at night. Oh, man. Just think about it all the time. So, way to go, Kyle. Uh, you get a point there. Uh, Jessica, <laughs> if you get this, you're going to go see Mr. 305. What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, that's Scream. That's there you Ghostface go. Killer. Ghostface from Scream. Way to go. All right, you hold on to line, Jessica. We will set you up, okay, with tickets to see Pitbull. Thank you. It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Tacos, no need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining tacos. It's raining tacos. Hey, good song. You know this song? Yeah. Who doesn't know this song? I don't know this song. We don't know it's raining tacos? No, I like it. It's been an internet sensation for years. In real life. Do you know Banana Phone? No, I don't know Banana Phone. <gasps> How do you not know Banana Phone? Sing Banana Phone. Ring, 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 ring Banana, banana Phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> Those are all written by Neo. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, I don't have Banana Phone in my system. Man, I can't believe you don't know Banana Phone. I know it now. Do you know the Hamster Dance? I know the Hamster Dance. Well, Thank me, God. Me, 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 okay. Me, 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 me. Oh, Thank God. <laughs> all right. Let's get Dorian Grande. Okay. So, obviously, they're going to be starting to promote the movie Wicked. So, Vanity Fair had Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande sit down. And Cynthia asked Ari a bunch of questions while Ari was hooked up to a lie detector. Right? She has this all strapped in. And Cynthia starts asking her all kinds of different questions, conspiracy theories. Do you think the moon landing was fake? No. We're picking up some deception here. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Do no. you think the real magic is fake? No, not till now. Not until <laughs> Stephanie puts that in me. Stephanie's the one with the lie detector saying she's mm-hmm. either telling the truth or not. <laughs> then they get into all of the rumors about possible plastic surgery that Ariana Grande has had. Did you get your nose done? No. Did you get a boob job? No. Did you get a face? Can you done? imagine? No. Not yet. I'm open. <laughs> Truthful. This is the best day of my life. Okay. Take that, you YouTube. People. Ready? <laughs> yes. Did you get a fox eye lift? No, but I I discovered it through people who thought I did, and I said, thank you. Yeah. She's telling the truth. There we go. Dang. Boy, that's cool of her. Yeah. yeah. Right? Peyton, do you know peanut butter jelly time? I do know peanut butter thank jelly God. time. Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Peanut butter jelly. 
I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this Wicked movie and this Wicked tour to come out. It's going to be so good. I know. So good. She also actually opened up to Vanity Fair about her relationship with Ethan Slater. Oh. SpongeBob. I can't get into this relationship, but it's a private thing. We don't know what happened, but the rumors were that he left his high school sweetheart, who just had a baby, his baby, and to be with Ariana Grande during the filming. Now, they were filming for about two years, and Ariana Grande said, listen, I'll never go into some of the specifics of some of how it all came about, but we were there for two years, and obviously, I went through a lot of life changes, but so did a bunch of people on the show, and she said, what really hurt was people believing the worst version of what happened. That makes sense. We've all been a part of that, right? It sucks. Yeah, the, and and like I said, we don't know exactly what happened, only what the tabloids kind of told us how it all went down, and also Ethan's ex came forward and said that she stole him away, but right. other than that, we don't know the full story, and Ari was just like, yeah, I, it, like, the thing is, is the tabloids have been trying to ruin me and take me down since I was 19 years old. I'm 31 now, and I'm not going to let, like, irreparable tabloids basically tell me what is right and wrong and good and evil because I know that I'm inherently a good person. And that movie might be the biggest thing, as huge as her career's been. This might be the biggest thing she's oh, ever yeah. done. Yeah, she, yeah, I mean, she says that playing Glenda has always been, like, her lifetime dream role. So I think they're both going to crush it. The trailers look beautiful. I'm so pumped for it. Yeah. Um, Dance with the Stars, Anna Delvey, that we were excited about. She got kicked out, right? Yeah. But she's now, she's doing press. Yeah, so she's doing press, and basically they asked her first a couple of, or a couple of days back if she feels like she got anything from Dancing with the Stars, and she was like, nope, I didn't get anything from this experience, and now she's going on saying that Dancing with the Stars actually used her to boost her ratings. That's what they have people for. Yeah. They have the stars on there to get ratings. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean... Like, <laughs> what? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Did you guys see her performances, though? Like, Did no. you have a chance to watch them? I didn't them? actually see any of her dancing. She just seems so uninterested. And it almost is like, I get it. Like, you, that's your personality. It's kind of like you don't really care about anything or anyone in front of you. But, like, give us a little something. Some effort. Something. Did you hear her dance partner, Maxim, say she's the worst he's he's worked with? Maxim is still there? Yeah. me. I, I had dinner partner. with that guy. I had no idea he was still on that show. Random. Why did you have I dinner I think that's with her I was partner. at a charity event. He was at my table. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I had no idea. I just pictured you and Maxim being like, yes, 7.30? Right. <laughs> What's up to now? <laughs> uh, what about Charlie DeMello? What's her issue? Oh, well, like, we were just talking about Wicked and being on Broadway and stuff like that. That's originally a Broadway film. But Charlie D'Amelio, she, like, got her fame off of being a TikTok star. She was a dancer. Mm -hmm. And she just got her first role a part of the cast and Juliet, which is a Broadway show. Show. And I guess Anne Juliet, have you guys ever heard of the show no. before? No. It's kind of like it's it's a show about if Juliet survived. If she would have lived uh, after Romeo and Juliet. And it's I like guess, if I died, it'd just be Anne Rich. <laughs> right. Exactly. Just like that. And it would be Rich's life without John Jack type okay. thing. And without the romance. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and so it like brings in like it's like modern songs that they bring broadway mm -hmm. and people are saying that charlie d'amelio like she doesn't deserve this role but actual theater students and people who are in broadway and theater like that they're coming out and they're defending her saying that broadway actually needs super talented dancers that that's a really good. big part of the role so hopefully you know she takes that good and crushes for her it. yeah i know good step in her in her career what's the cardi b dish cardi b is, it's so funny how unfiltered she is mm -hmm. i think it's absolutely hilarious she actually opened up you know she recently took the injections out of her booty. She went to Columbia for the actual surgery and I guess didn't realize she was actually pregnant at the time. I woke up one morning and my mouth tasted like copper. So I was like, oh my gosh, this only happened to me when I'm pregnant. So I was like, damn, I automatically knew that I was pregnant. And I did two pregnancy tests. I did a blood test in America and I did a blood test in Columbia and I wasn't pregnant. So I'm not thinking much of it. Me and my baby dad, we were in very bad terms. I still called them to and I was like, hey, I'm pregnant. And we kind of laughed about it because it's like, what the f***? That's so random. We literally went to Columbia while I got my surgery. And it's like, what the f***? Oh, whatever. She just got it anyway. <laughs> right. So she had butt implants? She had injections. And then she got them basically like dissolved. Dissol have you guys heard about the whole Quavo and Cardi B thing and why they're like really done done what? with their divorce and stuff like that? Apparently Cardi B 
hooked up with some other person while she was pregnant with Quavo's baby and Quavo was like that's like the most wrong thing you could have ever done to me we're done forever this she baby here like 10 the, times. this the baby. baby this baby right here yeah but she was... cheated on her on every you know and they were already separated exactly and I guess he like completely threw a fit and that's exactly why they and that's why there was that headline where she was like you've never ever heard a cheating scandal attached to my name exactly exactly mm. so I guess she had a man while guess, she was pregnant and he was mad I guess for Quavo it works one way but not the other right 